Sure, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, my presentation today is, is uh, changing tack a bit on the previous presentations that we've had. It's, it's more to do with uh, the simulations of the processes, uh, coming up with cost estimates and uh, how we can do this efficiently with multiple simulation tools, um, leveraging the best of, of, of several packages. Uh, so I'm from Simulus Engineers, but we also have Simulus Laboratories recently. Uh, well, in the last, I think, six years, we've, we've started doing our own lab test work as well. Uh, Simulus has been around for uh, a dozen odd years. Uh, started off with some, some young uh, engineers from a large engineering firm that thought they'd start up their own thing. Uh, we've been going great. We're still around. We're now doing uh, test work to go alongside our, our engineering work. It means that we have the, the whole study so we can we're not at the at the uh, behest of the of the, the labs not maybe getting the tests in on time so we don't know what's happening we can just we know who to uh, who to go and shoot if the things are going a bit slowly um, we also uh, so when when the company started up it was essentially for the simulations of the processing uh, very strong in in simulations for the the directors of the company um, since then, we've we've branched out. Now we do multidisciplinary uh, study work and obviously test work as well. Uh, my specialty is in the the simulations. Uh, I love using as many packages as I can with different uh, different uh, benefits. Uh, sometimes it's it's good to use several things at once. Um, we've got so SysCAD is I'll use the mouse here. SysCAD, a lot of you might be familiar with, is a flow sheeting tool uh, where you can build the whole model, very complex things with loads of chemistry, loads of recycles, lots of controls. Uh, and then there's OLI, which is a completely different type of beast. This is uh, more for the thermodynamics, very advanced uh, for thermodynamics processing, but not necessarily as great for, um, for flow sheeting, uh, although they do have uh, flow sheeting capabilities as well. Uh, so, going into it in a bit more depth, um, OLI is rigorous thermodynamics. Uh, there's a couple of models that it uses. I'm not going to go into all of the details there. It's essentially the Rolls Royce of, of thermodynamics. You go from 0% through to 100% of the solute, and you can come up with some meaningful uh, results that are calibrated on uh, empirical uh, test work results. Uh, it has a considerable uh, lithium-based uh, database. Has uh, you know, many of the, the the salts that are that are crystallizing in the lithium brine projects, which is how I thought I would integrate the discussion of these software packages into this conference. Um, we have so the the MSE model is the one that we would use for brine analysis. This is because it allows you to go right up to the, the saturation. Uh, the brine's really high SGs, um, much higher than the, the SGs of most hydrometallurgy liquors that we'd have in, in you know, acid leaching and processing. Uh, but the simulation package hand, handles it very well in the prediction of the solubilities, the physical properties of the liquor, um, uh, boiling points, vapor pressures, if we're going to be doing evaporative um, calculations as well. SysCAD, so I've had a lot more, well, been done work going back a lot further with SysCAD. Uh, it's a great tool for putting together the whole project as a simulation right from the very beginning through to the final products. Uh, large plant recycles can converge and calculate very easily uh, and really produce the mass and energy balance which forms the basis of the, the cost estimates. So it's a process design tool for what can you do with it? Well, you can very quickly come up with a model that allows you to have a basis for defining whether you have a, a reserve or not. So really early on in, in, a, in a phase of work, you can uh, do some quick analysis with the tools that you have at hand, not necessarily doing test work. You can come up with a model that shows you what you're likely to be able to, to achieve. Uh, and this gives you, can give you a basis early on for you know, less money than perhaps some of the test work would, would require. So, that, you know, in scoping, scoping level type. Um, as well as this, you can, uh, this mouse work, 
You can then use the simulation package to improve your plant performance. So you've got some operating data, you can calibrate your model with it, you can look at how the plant's running and look how to better uh, your system. Uh, this invariably will save you money. Uh, software is cheap. Um, test work can be more expensive. You can yeah, focus your attention on uh, the areas that are likely to save you the most money and do test work more appropriately. Also understanding your process. So SysCAD allows you to model in two different uh, methods, actually three, but there's the steady state model, which is a, a snapshot, an average, um, the average composition, uh, mass in has to equal mass out at all points. Uh, this is typically that forms the basis of, of cost studies. You'll have a, a, a steady state model, set of outputs, uh, the outputs feed into your mechanical calculations, sizing your equipment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you also have the ability to do dynamic simulations with, with SysCAD. So this allows you to have surge availability, upset conditions. And as, as uh, Camillo said, with the, the feed variations, you can integrate this directly into your model. Uh, with the chemistry, have some analysis of the impacts of that and look at how it's going to affect your processing. So. What do we do when we want to put extremely complex chemistry into a flow sheeting package where it doesn't necessarily have the brain of the, of the OLI, but it has the overall flow sheet simulation? So what do we do? Well, we can use both. And usually there are ways to take complex data from OLI, you know, find the correlations that matter the most, convert them into simple 2, 3D, multi-dimensional correlations with the standard tools, so Excel, the go-to for pretty much everyone. Uh, but then there's other fairly cheap tools that you can use, like Table Curve 3D, 2D, several hundred dollars you can curve fit to extremely uh, high R squareds from hundreds of, of equations. And then you can use these equations in, in SysCAD uh, so you can have the power of OLI uh, for the thermo modeling into uh, the SysCAD model for the flow sheeting. So here we have a simple, well, not so simple, brine processing uh, flow sheet, which I lifted from this uh, lithium process chemistry. Uh, we see here it's a, it's a brine processing with multi-stage solar evaporation coming up with a 6% lithium brine. So. I must admit I'm not I'm not the, the greatest lithium expert in the world, but I, I do know how to run run through these software packages, and I had a look at uh, what we were expecting to see. When I ran it through OLI, it seemed to come up with roughly what I would have expected. So um, here we have the outputs from a stage one calculation. So a first stage of evaporation from a, a typical brine from uh, the South American uh, Salas. And what we see, as expected, as the the moles of water are removed from the system. Uh, you have s sodium chloride crystallizing out uh, up to a point here where you start getting some other lovely things crystallizing as well. So the potassium and magnesium, magnesium sulfates, as we said, for the various waters of hydration. So what you can do in OLI is take, take this, you run multiple points of equilibrium, and then you can say, well, this is the sweet spot here at about nine. So what we'll do is we'll take that s snapshot, remove the solids from the equation, and rerun the equilibrium again, removing water. So in effect, this is crystallizing, 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 taking the salts out, going to the next evaporation pond. And what do we see when we do that? So then we've still got some sodium chloride coming out. Then we see we s we're starting to get some of the potassium coming out, uh, mixed salts, potassium and, and magnesium and the magnesium sulfates as well. Um, if we repeat the exercise, oh, and I, I should say that this is really, I'm only showing the things that we're really interested in for this presentation. The, the model outputs uh, an amazing amount of data. Uh, it has the full speciation, not just in, in molecular form, but it has the true ions in solution, their concentrations. It has physical properties of the, of the brine, calculated pH. Um, you know, all, of, all of those things. Um, so I've just simplified the outputs to show the, the salts as the water is being removed. Um, 
If we then progress uh, to the third evaporation pond, we have the inputs such as this. I mean, you'll see here it says SO3. Clearly, we don't have SO3, but this is because it's equilibrium of these elements. Uh, that's the calculated average well, inputs in molecular form, but it's not really SO3. Um, this is really what you get. Um, here we have some, uh, potassium chlor some potassium chloride with magnesium. We've got some magnesium sulfates and halite. Um, again, and then the fourth, same again. Now we're starting to see the lithium magnesium chloride salts coming out, lithium chloride. Uh, and then stage five, I think, did I do the same? Oh dear me, I didn't paste the, the same, I pasted the same graph on both slides. Um, so at this stage, once we've, we've uh, come up with a brine where the lithium is starting to crystallize out, this can form our uh, PLS, well, it's not pregnant leach solution, but it, it forms the feed liquor to the downstream hydromet processing, uh, the magnesium removal with lime and, and so on and so forth. So you look to OLI and you say, what is the composition of the liquor at that stage? And here we have this ma magic number of 6% lithium in the liquor. Um, at that point, we've uh, already crystallized a small amount of the lithium in, a, in the final evaporation pond uh, with the composition, of the average composition of the solids, uh, stage recovery for the elements just in that fifth evaporation stage. Now, I mean, this, this data, you know, we'll validate this with, with test work, but in the absence of test work, it's a very good starting point. It's something with which you can build a model uh, quite readily and you can come up with uh, equipment sizing quite readily. Um, but to do that, you need to then take this and put it into SysCAD. So, oh yes, let's, uh, another couple of things. So that just shows a very quick uh, test that I did in OLI, just seeing what it would predict in terms of the brines coming out of uh, a series of evaporation ponds. But what else can we do with OLI and brines? Well, so the, the potassium to magnesium ratio is one of these parameters that, that does affect the economics. And as we see that if you're precipitating potassium sulfate, now this, this actually was done uh, for previous work that, I, that I've worked on in a job that was looking, it was a potassium job actually. So uh, they were looking, there was a, being able to use the variability and solubility between the magnesium and the potassium as a function of temperature. So. OLI will predict uh, with very good accuracy. I, I plotted against um, literature data and it, it came up spectacularly well. Um, you can come up with these curves that you can then input directly into SysCAD and then use this when you're returning you know, process water back from the you know, whatever process you have going. Uh, you know roughly the temperature. If you're doing chilled crystallizers, you can put this into your equation and work out uh, what you're going to get at different temperatures and how to optimize your recovery and your yield and your grade, sorry. Uh, so this is a graph. It has absolutely nothing to do with lithium. It has absolutely nothing to do with this industry whatsoever. I have to apologize. My software in Table Curve 3D is not functioning on my computer at the moment because I had a hardware, manu had hardware change with upgraded RAM and it decided not to let me continue using it. I'm in the process of getting a new license, but as much as I tried to accelerate it, I couldn't get it by today. So this is a graph of the vapor pressure of, uh, of the weight percent of hyd hydrogen chloride over a solution of magnesium chloride that I did for a previous job. And so what we have here is some three-dimensional data that comes out of OLI, uh, and then you can throw this data in, in Excel uh, and throw this at uh, Table Curve 3D. It will run through its hundreds of equations and come up with a, an R squared of well, 9.99999. It's a very long, complicated equation, but you can put this into SysCAD very quickly and come up with a 3D correlation that works perfectly under those conditions. And you can use this to simulate with a bit more accuracy than you would otherwise if you had just simple heats of formation for ideal conditions. Uh, what else? Well, okay, so this is going back to lithium. The lithium to magnesium ratio, as we said, is, is one of the key parameters. Uh, the more magnesium you have, the more lime you need to remove it. Um, while you can manipulate the relative solubilities of magnesium and lithium by changing the temperature. So 
if, say, you weren't evaporating as far in your evaporation pond and you decided to evaporate it with thermal methods, uh, the choice of temperature at which you would do this and the vacuum that you pull uh, will affect the solubility of the lithium relative to the magnesium. So this is something you could take into account quite easily in the, in the simulation packages that might not be immediately obvious without a lot of literature data or prior knowledge. Uh, so yeah, this has the... It predicts the vapor pressure. It predicts you can you can have a look at maybe optimizing the corrosion resistance. I mean, the lower temperature, obviously, we're talking about some pretty nasty nasty uh, chlorides. Um, you might be able to go to 904 steel if you go cold enough, which would be nice. Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, that you can reduce the magnesium load if you can remove it, you know, prior to the 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 calcium oxide removal. And of course, all of this has an impact on the capex and opex. Right, so here we have SysCAD. This is just a very quick uh, demo of what it's going to look like. It's, it's, you literally just click the button, click the mouse, it pastes an icon down, you put chemistry into it, you define your splits, you connect things together, um, you put equations in, you put controllers in, these um, feed forward or feedback controllers um, that you know, calculate the percent of each element crystallizing out. You define the chemistry relatively simply in each of these things, but you use the equations as you would have developed in OLI to predict you know, reasonably well. Um, this was one that I built. Um, this, is, this was the outputs from that fairly simple simulation. Uh, this is you know, the, the output that you would get from a steady state model. It gives you your flows. Uh, something we've done at Simulus is to develop uh, standard calculations for mechanical equipment items, so pumps, tanks, uh, hoppers, bins, uh, mills, everything. Uh, we've got a standard calculation for pretty much everything, including the motor size. We can take uh, the SISCAD model and directly link it to our capital sizing uh, calculations. And from that, the CapEx comes out relatively easily because we've got our database of current uh, capital costs. Um, and also the, the power draw for the, for the equipment comes out as well. So this can all be done in the very early phases of work for a reasonably small amount of money and can save us time, come up with a, a, a reserve. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's, that's the idea of it. That's all. It's a very short talk. Um, if I just open up to questions.